All right, welcome back to another episode. Um, I have taken some advice from Master Engine Builder himself, and because he's built and taken apart more motors than I could probably ever dream of doing myself, and I was asking him about uh, ring gap, and he said, well, does it have a gap when you put it in your cylinder? I was like, yeah, it's got the gap. He's like, then put it together. I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I trust your judgment. <laughs> so we have a gap. This is the top ring. Um, I guess I'm just going to throw it together and trust Master Engine Builder over here. But, uh, so yeah. Oh, another thing. Where's that bag? I bought. Instead of putting them on by hand. Yeah. Went and bought a uh, ring installer. Make it easier. Like eight bucks, I think. Eight, nine dollars. Uh, worth it. So, uh, I'm going to sit here and put rings in pistons. And then I'll come back to you when I go to put the crank back in, actually. So, all right. So, I gotta quit doing that. Gotta quit doing the all right, so. God. Anyway. About to put this crank in. And then we're gonna get this uh, rear main seated, situated. And then we're gonna put some caps on. And it is just me by myself. Um, so this, this might be a little difficult to film, but I will do my best. So let me get you guys hopefully set up on something where you can see, and then we'll put a crank in. Okay. So we've got uh, assembly loop. That's what you're gonna be putting it together with. You wanna give it a good coating. Uh, don't go overboard because you do have a lot of bearings to, you know, put put lube on. So, I mean, don't use all of uh, all of your assembly lube on, you know, just these bearings. But anyway, let's get this crank in here. You be very careful. Don't hit anything. At least right out here. It gets all the way down. And you can, well, I mean, don't fully spin it yet. Because you're going to put some on the, on the crank itself. I would use the most on the very back bearing because it's a lot wider. But like I said, don't go overboard, take your time. Just get a good coating on all of the bearings. Or at least where you're bottom bearings are going to sit. We're going to get our second pack open. Forgot my knife. Sadly, today. Oh look, there's no one. I'm going to start with this uh, very front one. Take the old bearing out. That's his freaking cammed Coleman. What's good? 
What are you doing? Crank and bearings. You know, the use. Right. But just getting everything put together, I reckon. You put these bearings the same way, or put them in the same way you do any of the other ones. And you're going to look at your little arrow, points towards the front, and we're just going to set it in there. Papas are all numbered. I don't think these are actually. I don't see anything. Yeah, I think they're just... Yeah, Papa says one, two, and three. Yeah. Ford did this a little better than Chevy did, because Ford's numbers shit. So that's always nice. Uh, that's why with these, you got to pay attention. pay attention and make sure you put them back on the one you got them off of. Uh, hey, Joey, give me the next one. Farthest one from me. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same for all, you know, all five. And sometimes getting them out is a little bit of a struggle bus on these main caps. Because there's no grip on anything. Yeah, you'll have some that might be difficult, but you'll just get the flathead screwdriver on the little lip and you can pry it up pretty easy doing that, so not too big of a deal. What are you doing, honey? Check that. Just wipe down your bearing, get any old oil or, you know, anything else that might be there. And then put your new one in. You got more hands? Um, they were gapped, actually. I put them in the cylinders and they were already gapped. I checked them, so. They didn't see them. Uh, they were, whenever I put them in the cylinders. Um, Every one of them? Yeah, they were all gapped, and I asked Papa, I was like... Are rings supposed to be this loose? Yeah. I know they're supposed to be have looseness, but... Yeah, they're supposed to be loose. Because, you know, whenever you put... Or whenever you take old pistons out, they've been in there forever and they won't have that much play because they've been in there forever. Like the ones we took out didn't have a lot of play in them. Just the, just because they've been compressed for, you know, pretty much however long this since 79, I'm, I'm sure. Eh, it probably has been a part of since then. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Because, like I said, this motor only had... 80k on it. I doubt anybody has ever taken apart this motor. So it came out of the truck, went in jail bait, and then came out of jail bait and was given to you? Yeah, pretty much. And one more. There you go. The fact that I remember what the name of that truck was, even though you only did one video on it. It was in more than one, but it only had one about it, I think. You could definitely see it in more than one video. Well, I don't know how you wouldn't. It's basically the Harley Quinn of Gil's group. Yeah, pretty much. But, uh, oh yeah, so I was talking to my cousin, Zach. They have my heads out of the motor and we found out that those heads are not 882 heads and Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, the good thing because the heads that they are I believe he said they were 226's which dirt track motor so we think we're gonna I'm gonna make more horse than what I originally was thinking so we were thinking in between like 3 and 350 but now it's going to be more towards 350. 350, 375 is what we're thinking. Maybe. Which is fine. I mean, you know, I'm not complaining. I mean, the more the better for this thing. you got to spin, what, 33s? 35s? 35s. Or, uh, 35s. So, uh, yeah, probably a good thing. Yeah. I'm not complaining. I can't wait to hear it. 
insane. I'll actually get to hear my cam because it'll be carved. Now, I'm gonna grab the torque wrench. I believe these are 70 foot pounds, but I am going to double check. Um, so, I'm gonna double check, and make sure on the torque specs. And then we'll get to tightening these things down. So, uh, see you in just a second. So, I did check it out. It is 70 foot pounds on your main caps. So, we're going to get these. Somebody has put in a regular bolt. Just to. Okay. I'm going to pretend like I didn't see that. Yeah, so, okay, so I guess this motor has been apart before because you don't just put a regular bolt unless you've taken it apart. But then again, I don't know why anybody would ever put a regular bolt on a main cap. I'm just going to pretend like I didn't see that. So we're going to get these um, down where I can start torquing them. And you're going to want to start torquing the middle and then move your way out uh, is the best way to do it. You can, you can cause some issues if you just go in a line. Uh, you might throw it a little bit out of balance or out of whack where it might catch when you don't want that. So you want to start in the middle and then you know, uh, alternate your way out get these as evenly as, yeah as, as close as you can get to carpet it's just getting them all before you start torquing obviously you know, you, torque wrench might be a wrench but it is not I mean I don't personally use it as just a, a wrench I wouldn't sit here and try to turn these with a torque wrench for you can loosen them with that torque wrench it's got a wrench setting just a loosen setting. It's getting all of them down far enough to actually start being uh, tight. Yeah. Before you want to use it. So just do it by hand if you can. Maybe a couple of them you won't be able to, which is fine. Just get them as low down as you can before you start using it. I believe it was a five. Is that the one we used over there? Yeah. Uh, is that it on the toolbox? Yeah. Make sure you're set on 70. Go till you get the click. And we are not checking uh, anything with plastic gauge because of how good my bearings look when I took them out. Um, I didn't see any problems at all. So there's no, really no point checking clearances. Uh, like if you're changing sizes of bearings, like if you're going like a thousandth under or oversized, then yes, you need to check them. But if you're not, and your bearings look good when you take them out, uh, personally, I wouldn't worry about it, but you can check them. It's just more time. And the hope is that once these are torqued, this motor still needs to spin as freely as you've seen, you know, when we had all the pistons out and you were just uh, spinning the crank. It still needs to spin relatively freely. Like I said, it doesn't need to spin so freely that it's loose, 
and it doesn't need to, you don't need to try super hard to try to turn your crank because then you have issues. We had that issue yesterday uh, putting together my grandfather's small block. But we also found out that, you know, we had a, or he had a bearing in the wrong place, which is the thrust bearing. Um, on a 302, the thrust bearing is in the middle. And on Chevy 350s, they are in the back. Which is why you have the bigger uh, bearing in the very back. That's what uh, has your crank in play. And one last cap and then we'll check and make sure you know I did this correctly. Make sure it spins. Make sure it spins. I'm not a fan of this random regular bolt. But uh, you know. It was in the motor. It was in it so. It just makes me think somebody's taken this out before, but I mean, I don't know why. If this motor actually has as many miles on it as we thought it did, then you know I don't I don't know why you would, especially if it's still got stock everything in it. All right, moment of truth. Oh, look at that! Boom. Just as good. I like it. And the, uh, the assembly lube that you put on these is basically just going to hold it over uh, just for the few seconds it's going to take for first startup for your oil to get back into everything. So whenever it's spinning that, that assembly lube is going to keep it lubricated enough to where yeah, it's going to hold it for long enough to where your oil pressure kicks in and you know you start getting oil. But I like that a lot. So this would be all I'll be able to do for today. Uh, not the video, but this is it for just today in general. I got to go pick up some kiddos and get ready for tomorrow. We got more hay to bale tomorrow. But I'm happy so far. Um, we've got rings in the pistons. Uh, next thing will be throwing pistons in. So that should be the next thing you see. Um, and we'll just pick up from there. So we'll see you in a few.